Hello and welcome. I'm going to be sharing with you how to create your own custom GPT. And first of all, I just want to let you know that this requires a paid subscription to ChatGPT. So you do have to pay. It's $20 a month, but I do find that it is very, very beneficial. So if you want to be doing a lot of marketing for your business and you want to do it quickly and easily, then this is a really great option. So what you're going to do is, as long as you are on the paid subscription, then you're going to see um, like this right here, ChatGPT 4.0. And so you can come over here to your profile picture and you can click on My GPTs. And then you're going to click on create a GPT and you won't see the, these things. These are just the ones that I've created for myself already, um, but we're going to create a new one. So we'll click this plus button and we're going to be creating our GPT. So you can enter in the info by yourself or you can go over into create and have it help you build it. And so that's what I do here. So what you want to put is you want to say what is the purpose for this and I'm specifically trying to build one that is going to be helping me market for my family photography business. So it says here, um, you can say something like make a creative who helps generate visuals for new products or make a software engineer who helps format my code. So I would say here, make a marketing expert who helps family photographers market their business on social media, in newsletters, and on their website. Oops, I messed up there. You know what? You don't even have to fix your typos because it'll understand, but whatever, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so this is what I'm going to say, and hopefully that is good enough. So let's click on that and see what it says. So it does this thing where it says updating GPT and it does this anytime you change it. And right now you're just in the setup mode. So while you're in the setup mode, you're telling it to change things here and then this will continue to refresh. So you don't really want to ask it to do things that you want right now because it's going to refresh and it's not going to save any of your conversations because you're just in setup mode. And once you're done with this entire thing, you're going to click on the create button and then you're actually creating it and you can, and your conversations will be saved and you'll be able to go back and see all of your stuff that you've had it do. So right now, this is just to test it out to see how it sounds and if it's giving you the output that you're looking for. And if not, you can go back into here and keep reconfiguring things. So that's just kind of like an overview of what we're doing. So now it's going to have you choose a name and it really doesn't matter if this is just for yourself and you're not like sharing it with anybody else. It could be called literally anything that you want. Um, so you can just say yes, or you can say, no, I want something different or whatever. So, um, I guess for the purposes of this, we'll just say yes, because I'm not going to spend too much time on the name. It doesn't matter. Um, and then it's going to have you like do a profile picture, which also doesn't matter. And sometimes it comes up with like the ugliest stuff, but it really doesn't matter. And you can click on the configure button and go in and upload your own photo. Hey, that's not even bad. Um, so we're going to say yes, that's good. And now this is the part that's actually important. So uh, when offering advice for photographers, what should be emphasized or avoided? And so what you want to do here is just really let it know what it is that you want it to do and what you want it to sound like and what your main purpose and goal is with what you're trying to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in here something that I already used when I created my previous GPT, but I'm kind of redoing it for you guys so you can see what it looks like. So what I wrote was, this GPT is a marketing expert for family photographers designed to help with social media strategies, Instagram reels, captions, email campaigns, blogging, and content repurposing. It focuses on maintaining a warm, friendly, and client-focused tone that mirrors a personal, inviting writing style. The GPT suggests creative, authentic marketing ideas that reflect a photographer's approach to relaxed, candid sessions and storytelling through photos. 
The GPT ensures all content remains relatable, engaging, and aligned with a personal, authentic voice, prioritizing genuine connection with the audience. It now references the blog post to emphasize... Oh, that's actually... I'm, we're going to do that in a second, but... Uh, okay, we'll take that out. So for now, this is what I'm going to say to it, and I'm going to send it, and we'll see what it does. It's updating. So anytime you give it instructions to update what it is, it updates it for you. So there you go. Um, should the tone be casual, formal, or something else? So what tone do you want it to use? I literally already told it warm, friendly, whatever. It always asks anyway. So let's just say I want the tone to be casual, but still professional. I want it to sound like it's coming from a friend. And you can feed it as much information as you want. So it says, feel free to try it out so you can start asking it to do things. And it gives you some different suggestions here of what it can do. And this is simply just to see if the output is what you want it to be. And then you can... Um, configure it even more by just like telling it to do stuff here. But let's click on the configure button because over here you can change anything that you want. So if you decide you want a different name, you can do that there. If you want to upload a different photo, you can click on that. Um, the description is here and then here's the instruction. So it put everything that we told it in there so it can remember that. And then these are the conversation starters, which you can change. So if you know that you're going to come in and use this GPT to do specific things, very often, then you can put those conversation starters in there to help you do that. And then this is what I really like, and it's that you can do a knowledge base. Now, if you want to start uploading things, then you need to click this button here to allow it because it says um, that you need to do that. Like files can be downloaded when code interpreter is enabled. So um, I, I click that and then you can upload any files. So you can, like if you have certain emails that you like to send to your clients, or if you have a guide that you send to your clients or anything like that, you can upload it here. And so then this GPT will understand you specifically and how your business works. Another thing you can do is you can give it your website. So you can put in like whatever your website is and you can say, can you please look through the content of this web page and update the GPT to understand how my business works and what I offer. So you can do that and it will only read one web page at a time. So it won't actually look through your entire website. So if you want it to look at several different pages, you have to put the URL for each page in here for it to look at. But you can definitely do that and it will update itself to understand your business specifically which makes it so much better. And so the reason why this is so much better than just using the regular chat GPT is that you can train it to understand you. And so it gives you way better output. Like I've tried it like 50 times better. So if we want, we can go over here and just ask it a question. Let's see. How about um, list or blog post ideas. There you go. I mean, that's just so basic, but let's see what it does. So how to prepare your, for your family photo sessions, stress-free tips for gorgeous photos, the magic of candid moments, um, seasonal photo inspiration, creative ideas for fall, winter family portraits, how to display your family photos, creative ideas for turning memories into art. So it's giving you some different ideas here that you could do. And then if you liked one of these, you could say, okay, I like idea number one and can you help me write it or whatever. Another thing you can update the GPT to do is um, if you don't have enough information, always ask clarifying questions because that way it won't just make stuff up if it doesn't know something it will actually ask you 
and that will get you better, more targeted information here. So I like to do that one. Okay, perfect. And then you can also ask it, what else do you need to know in order to set up this GPT? Okay, so this is nice because it's asking you the questions and then you can go and answer them. So you could just put like one, um, let's see, a Canva for design, MailChimp for newsletters. Oh, so you can say what you actually use. So you could say, you know, I have my newsletters on, I mean, we can just say MailChimp. I don't, but we could say that. And then we could say, um, I use Canva to design. Um, I, you know, whatever. You can just say all the things that you do. Um, and then also another thing is if you want to continue writing on these, if you push enter, it'll just send it. If you hit shift enter, you can actually push, push enter. So then I'll say two. And then it says response length and detail. Would you prefer short actionable tips or more detailed advice when responding to users? So when it's giving me information, do I want it short or do I want detailed advice? I don't even know. I think I want like a mix of both, a mix of both depending on, oops, what's, what is best for the situation, I guess, because I don't know. And then three, content updates or trends. Should it stay updated with current social media trends or evergreen advice? Uh, yes, stay updated on trends. So there, we answered their questions and now it's updating the GPT. And you can come over here and um, do you see how like what I wrote is now grayed out because it's not going to save it because whatever it gave me now that I updated it, that goes away. So that's why I'm saying don't put stuff in here that you want to save because it won't save it. Um, so let's say write me an Instagram caption for a post about what to wear for fall photos and we'll see what it says cute see how fast and easy that is and like you can go in and sort of change it a little bit and one thing that i have noticed is when you are doing when you're using AI, it'll start to write in a way that maybe doesn't sound like something that you would say. So I would come over here and update the GPT and I would say, like, don't do this thing that it does all the time, you know? Special instructions. And I did shift enter. When providing output, please don't use the phrases dive in <laughs> constantly it says dive in um elevate i don't want to use the word elevate that's just like automatically that's ai that wrote it um let's see uh journey embark <laughs> So I would just say, like, don't use these things. And then any time that it gives you an output of things that you hate, that you are like, I would never say that. Please don't ever say that. Um, you could just update it and say, like, please don't use these phrases. And so it will remember and it won't do it anymore. So let's just update that. And it didn't really even use any of those phrases, but I just thought of it as we got this output. So now it will update that. Cool. 
All right. So when you are done, you can click this create button and you can either share it with only yourself. You can share it with anyone with the link. If you actually wanted to share it with a friend or something, you can add it apparently to the GPT store, but I don't think you're making any money. I think you're just like letting people have it for free. Um, but I'm just going to say only me save. Not that I'm going to use this one because I already made another one that's better, but uh, and then you can hit view GPT and it shows up right here and it will always be at the top here in your GPTs. It'll show up right here. So if you want the one that you made, you just click on it. And then now I'm asking it a question, whatever I want to ask, and it will give it to me. So remember those things that you set up, those four questions, they're always going to be here. So if you've created this and you're like, oh, I really want to go update it. I have more to add. Just click on this. Oops, not that one. You have to go into your GPTs, JK. My G my GPTs. And you have to click, oh, edit GPT. There it is. And so now you can go back into like tell it to change things or you can even configure it yourself. And again, you can upload your files if you want to upload files for it to understand you even better. And there you go. It's pretty easy to set this up. You just have to do some thinking on what it is that you want to tell them what like to do. So you have to think like, okay, what kind of information does it need to be able to give me the output that I want? So you just have to give it as much information as possible and it'll be better and better and better. So you can continue to add to it and make it even better than it was before. All right. I hope that was helpful. And if it was, give it a thumbs up, follow me and leave me a comment because I think that'd be cool. All right. <laughs> Bye.